your life. Refuse to be intimidated. Refuse to be intimidated. When I come to church, don't try to control my mood. If you see me jump, let me jump. If you see me praise, let me praise. For if you knew where he picked me from, you will understand why I scream the way I scream. If you do not understand my pain, you will not understand my praise. I am praising him because I was low yesterday. Now I can stand. Now I am counted. This is the work of God. Yesterday they would look at me from far and say, who are you? But now they look at me and say, how are you? Ah. Find a neighbor say, be careful the way you treat me. Uh, don't be intimidated. Find another neighbor say, be careful the way you treat me. I am next in the list of God. I am next in the list of God. I am next in the list of God. I am next to testify. Please have, have a seat. Help me. Help me do this thing. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, that this man, leaping, praising God, went in the temple. Instead of everyone being happy with the miracle that took place, the Bible says the rulers of the temple, the leaders in the house of God, began to murmur in their heart. For they saw this man close to the apostles, and as people had gathered around the apostles, they began to preach to them the resurrection in the name of Jesus. No other name but the name Jesus. When they heard that, they were so upset. The Bible said they put hands on them and threw them in jail. Many great men of God are suffering persecution today simply because they dare stand to be the vehicle through which God will reach out his people. Instead of rejoicing, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the rulers of the temple were offended. Understand, not everybody is happy with your progress. That's why I say to you, don't make everybody your friend. Be in peace with every man. Be good with every man. But do not make everybody your friend. I have read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I have never seen a verse that says, make them all your friends. The Bible says, be at peace with all of them, but don't make all of them your friends. Because you do not know where your next battle will come from. I love you from there. I embrace you from there. If you gotta be here, I gotta be sure that you are destined for me. If you really need a friend and you cannot find by yourself a teddy bear, lock yourself in the room and hug your teddy bear because at least your teddy bear will not betray you. Your teddy bear will not go behind your back and back bite you. This is wisdom for life. This is wisdom for those who want to succeed. This is wisdom for those who want to get there. Listen to me, your door open for you is not a door open for everybody. Not everybody is expected to go through that door with you. Some people in your journey will let you down. They will leave you. They will abandon you. But if you keep your focus and you keep on marching, you keep on walking, I'm here to say you will get there. You will get there. 
everybody will say amen to your prophecy. Not everybody wants you to succeed. Not everybody wants you to make it. Not everybody. But the devil is a liar. When God says yes, who can say no? When God opens a door, who can shut it? You will get to destination in the name of Jesus. You will get where God set for you to get in the name of They arrested the apostles. Because they operated in power. To many people, my only crime is power. Your only crime is power. The reason why the devil hates you the way he does is because he's seeing what God has bestowed in you and he's afraid for it to manifest. You stand as a danger to the kingdom of the devil. You are an obstacle to the advancement of his work. That's why he is persecuting you the way he's persecuting you. Don't lose focus. Keep your eyes on God. God knows he cares for you. The true the men of God in jail simply because God used them to heal somebody. And as I began to question them the following day, the Bible says the Sanhedrin gathered. The Sanhedrin was a platform that brought all the religious group in the variation of their tendencies. It was made of the rulers of the temple. It was made of the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. They all gathered together and they questioned them. They said, please tell us, by what power and by what name did you get this miracle done? Those who are supposed to advocate the cause of Christ, those men and women who are supposed to be acquainted with the work of God. They were Pharisees, they were Sadducees, they are scribes. They, they are people who seemingly know the scripture. They have seen what God did with Israel. They have seen how God used Moses, God used Elijah, God used uh, Abraham, but yet they still question him. Not everybody with a Bible is aligned with God. It is shocking that the greatest persecution of the church is coming from the church. Jesus Christ was not killed by prostitutes or drug dealers. It was by Bible carriers or equivalent mind what is happening around you so that brought them and I wanted to know how did you do that they will ask you after now as you go home from this place they will ask you how what just happened to you to church you were all broken what happened to you you say no other name but the name Jesus by his name I am collected now by his name every door is open for me by his name I'm exalted and lifted by his name my enemies are down by his name, those who came against me by one way are scattered by seven different ways. By his name, no other name but the name Jesus. Now hear me good, hear me good. The word of God says that uh, as they questioned them, Peter took the word with John and began to answer them one by one with boldness. May God give you boldness. Verse 10 of chapter 4, he said, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
by which name? By which name? I can't hear you. By which name? You gotta get ready and train yourself so that when they question your miracle and say, How did you get it? By which name? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How did you get through this? You'll say, By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man here stands before you. By the name of Jesus, everything that is broken is collected together again. By the name of Jesus, I see your enemies falling before you. I see, I see your enemies falling before you. Who am I speaking to? The enemies you know of, the enemies you ignore, they are falling, falling, falling before you in the name of This is the stone which was rejected by you builders which has become now the chief corner stone. No, there is salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven. Ah. There is no other name under heaven, meaning on earth, no other name. I know many people will try to make themselves very important. But hear me. No other name. Krishna cannot help you. The ancestor who died in pain cannot help you. He could not help himself. How is he going to help you? salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved if you are here I may not know your trial I may not know what brought you here today you may say pastor I have come I'm desperate for God I cannot live another day with me like this they have said I have something that cannot be removed and that this thing will see me to my grave. If you are here, you say, Pastor, nothing seems to work. I come from a broken family. My mommy fall, fell in this pit. My daddy, my aunties, everybody's falling in this pit. Everybody's falling in this pit. And that this is my story. I have come longing for God. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is your only way out. He alone can do for you what no man can do is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and hope for you are here they have diagnosed you with a disease and even people around you are expecting your downfall they're waiting for the day they will hear he is gone they have been already putting money aside for the burial let me tell you he's able Jesus to rescue you from death I have seen Jesus do awesome things. I've seen him resurrect the dead. I've seen him heal all type of disease and sickness. I'm here to speak to somebody. Your situation is a weight on your shoulder. Nothing seems to work. You are seeing your family destroyed, your marriage destroyed. You are looking at your children. You are wondering what will be of them. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is your answer. Not tomorrow, today. He can transform you. Are you hearing me? I said not tomorrow, today. He can change your life. Because He is God. He is God. 
A woman came one day. She had a tumor. And this tumor kept on growing and growing in her stomach. Her stomach was big. And she said, Pastor, they said they cannot operate on me. Because on top of having a tumor, she had sugar diabetes. So it was one difficulty upon another. She said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I know my days are numbered. I ask her by who? Jesus Christ has the last word over your life. I said, Jesus Christ has the last word over your life. Until Jesus pronounce whatever they have said is not conclusive. Amen. I said, if I pray, a miracle will happen. She went on her knees and said, I believe. Is there anybody who will say, I believe? We prayed. She said, when she left, she was bleeding. She carried on bleeding. She panicked because she was bleeding. I said, don't panic. Don't panic. I can tell the hand of God on somebody. And right now, I sense God all over this auditorium. I sense a miracle. A miracle is happening to somebody under the sound of my voice. A week later, this woman came. I could not recognize her. She looked different. Her stomach was gone. The tumor disappeared. She was rejoicing and said, Pastor, now I have one problem. I said, which one? He said, I have to change my wardrobe. I said, daughter of Zion, go and change it. What no man can do, God can do. You remember the man testify here? He may still probably be around here in the auditorium. He said, for, for many years, he could not walk. He was paralyzed. They took him to many uh, uh, nyangas or ritualists. They did all kinds of things. While testifying right here, he said that I used to pay 1,500, 2,000 rand, and so forth. I spent my money from one ritualist to another. Nothing happened. Till one day watching TV, I saw AMI. I said, I will go there. If there is God in heaven, he will show up. This man came in the third service as I laid hands on him. Pass he, he fell under the power. From that day on, the policy left him forever. No other name but the name. What's your name? Can I pray for you? I see you looking at me. Do you want it? You want it? Can I pray for you? No other name but the name Zahalaba Shokorobo Sete. If you came here, you do not know what to do. I want you to know that, that this is not an ordinary place. This is a place of God. This is a house of God. This is a place where God manifests His glory and His power. And today He will do just that. Do you believe that God is able to do the impossible? Can I pray that God may heal you? God may heal you. What's your name? Sharon who? Have you ever spoken to me before? No other name but the name Sharon. I see a woman pregnant and people speaking against this woman. They say what you carry is nuisance. What you carry will amount to nothing. And they're speaking to this woman. She's holding a tummy. She's in pain. The woman went to give birth. October. In October, 
Mahe Katishaya. Which month were you born? In October, Pastor. How many are you in the family? It's only two, it's me and my younger brother. You are only two? Yes. Does your young brother come to church here? No, he's in Bloemfontein. He's in Bloemfontein? Yes. Who's Mokadi or Mokadi? Mokadi is my younger brother. Let me spell what I'm reading. I'm seeing M O C H A. That's my brother. D I. That's my brother. Sorry? That's my bro younger brother. That's your younger brother. It's Mochadi. Mochadi. Kori Atashe Kiri Araba Soto. But who is, is it Otantile or? Otantile is my son. Thank you, Jesus. Otantile. Otantile. That's your son? Yes, yes, Pastor. The Spirit of God is telling me that uh, he has placed grace over that child. Yes, Lord. But this child already in a young age is fighting a lot of battles. Already in a long age. But you see, whatever came from uh, yourself, is going to your child. I'm seeing him touching his neck and shaking his neck. What? He has a lump on his neck. Do you want me to take it out? Mm. This child is suffering rejection. Yes. The father rejected him. The father rejected him. Yes. Does he know his father? No, he, doesn't. he doesn't know his father. He can't afford to lose you. That's why I want to step and intervene in your case. There is a spirit that has been attacking you, and this spirit, you see, that's why sometimes you wake up with a lot of oppression. You feel heavy. And this spirit has everything planned, everything set. But the devil is a liar. Somebody said, the devil is a liar. Do you want us here free? Where's your child? Is at home, stays with your parents. Okay. I will pray for you. Remember her. The lump on the neck of your child will disappear. No other name but the name Jesus. What men cannot do, Jesus can do. And not only that. I will open ways for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is wrong, the Lord breaks it now. I destroy every evil power released against you. You false spirit. The blood of Jesus is against you. I command you out of her. Out. Bring it up. Say, Lord, heal me. Say, I believe you. To be the healer in my life. I believe you. Take disease and sickness away from me. In Jesus' name. Everybody stretch your hands. See the miracle of God. You wait for his testimony. What you make happen for her, God will make happen for you. As you have your hands stretched toward her, may God and heaven stretch hands toward you. Zehele Beshia, I release you from it. I release you from it. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Freedom. Well, I have no doubt that the Lord has spoken to you. Indeed, true, there is no other name but the name of 
Jesus. I want to pray for you that God, in the name of Jesus Christ, may open every locked door in your life, that God may meet you at the point of your need. Whatever was wrong in your life, may God fix it in your life in the name of Jesus. Wherever you may be, in the eastern part of Africa, in the western part of Africa, anywhere in this land, may the Lord God I serve meet you right there at the point of your need. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Reveal your glory and your power. Show up mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Today I pray for my brother and my sister. I ask God that you give them victory in Jesus' name. May every enemy of your success fall before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that dig a grave for you, I decree and I declare he will fall in it himself. May the Lord God vindicate you. May God elevate you. May God restore you. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah. Family, I believe that you have received from God. If you are in the vicinity of Hallelujah Ministries, I want you to please make sure that you come and visit us. Thousands of lives have been changed every day. The power of God is tangible in our midst and God is waiting for you. As you will step in the glory of God in Hallelujah Ministries every Friday and every Sunday, I promise you, your story will change. You will testify to the glory of our God. And that if you are out there, you say, Pastor, I have received a testimony through Hallelujah Ministries. Please let us know about it. Let us be part of your joy. Write to us. Let us know that God has used us to reach to you and to bless you. I love you and I pray the blessings of God upon you. I am Afro Kao, hoping to see you very soon. God bless you.